Hello, so as you can see, I'm in the studio and I'm all togged up and I'm painting, I'm working on my ramshackles and I'm at that messy middle stage of painting. So I thought what I'd do today is share with you, it suddenly occurred to me that there are kind of three things in my head where I get kind of a little bit stuck and overthinky and 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 in a in in a difficult sort of situation with paintings so i thought i'd share them with you and share some sort of resolves on those things uh today uh so i'm going to turn the camera around and get going with that but just so that you're kind of watching out for these things the, the first thing that i get stuck with is i think we can get even into a routine with play we get into a a sort of a static mindset or a sort of a same thing all of the time and it stops being about play and it becomes too mechanical so that's the first thing the second thing is i want to talk about timing timing and how much time we spend on paintings and how that all works with the series and then the third thing is that I want to just sort of broach this subject of how much creatures of habit we are and how, you know, if we're not careful, we're not pushing things enough. Um, and uh, it's it's just about sort of trying to kind of maintain a momentum and keep challenging ourselves. So that's the third thing I want to talk about. And I'm going to do that by sharing some of the stages and some of the places where I'm at uh, with some of the work. So in this uh, slightly modified exercise uh, to what I've been showing you before for my warm warm ups, uh, I've taped some uh, paper uh, into squares so that they reflect uh, the same as my paintings. And then I'm literally placing and plonking marks um, and to an extent shapes, but mostly marks uh, from my previous drawings and studies. Uh, and the fact is when you take the tape off, as you will see, um, it helps to give you a more of a dynamic image because you get the impression of things coming in from the sides and crossing over and going off the edges and that kind of creates a, a dynamic so it's just sort of changing things up a little bit compared to what I've done before and I've been doing some other things as well including cutting up previous studies and using them to create collage recollaged pieces so uh, but I won't show those uh, today but at least you can see um, how this is sort of panning out really and it just is a way of warming up and challenging ourselves and getting things keeping things a little bit fresh rather than getting too sort of stuck into a routine really and some interesting things come out of this study my favorite one is the bottom right um, and it's just uh, an, another way of of sort of challenging ourselves so just briefly, this is the sort of setup I have uh, at the base of the wall um, and I'm going to be starting to work on this painting. So this is one of my larger paintings and I'm just having this array of, of different tools so that I'm not tempted just to stick with one as I've got them all to hand ready and waiting and my paint palette and then things for mark making different uh, tools, uh, even a brick look to uh, maybe scrape into and obviously plenty of towels. Okay, so this is where this big one uh, is uh, now. And I have been really sort of, I suppose, in the first instance, it was exciting. And then I think I got into this mode of trying to create a composition too early on. And so now I'm realising that I just need to keep going and keep pushing. And it's only by not forcing it and keeping fresh and loose and pushing the mark making and pushing um, how I'm using the paint and the different brushes and so on. It's only through that uh, constant just keep um, going that I'm going to get the magic happening, I think. So I'm pushing the mark making here. I'm trying to come in with different tools. The brick was just used, moving things around with the rag covering things over that, that were becoming precious so that uh white that light color just covering and then and then wiping some of some of the paint away coming quite strong with some of the colors as well and mark making tools using a rigger brush there and i use the trowel quite a bit as well to move the paint around not all of the time but it can be quite a handy tool turning the painting as well that's a, a good trick and flicking the paint i'm trying to create that sort of battered building look so I'm building up these layers just not being too precious not too thinky just overlaying adding different colors breaking up that big blue patch of, of paint across the middle 
and just keep working away and building it up. In sort of 20 minutes or so, I've just sort of started to add a bit more in terms of the feel of these battered buildings in terms of the patina. And of course, there's a long way to go, but it starts to get a feel without it being too um, purposeful in terms of forcing it. And in that 20 minutes, I had no idea what uh, I was going to be doing. And I think that's all good really, because I think if you force it, it becomes, I don't know, somehow sort of static. And what I want is the real feel of these places and the energy of these places and potentially the movement too. And quite a bit of it might disappear under paint. I might hide things, I might bring things to the fore, but at least I'm starting to create a richness. So these are three of uh, the number of panels that I've got that are the sort of medium size. So these are 40-ish centimetres square and they're chunky panels. And they've had obviously the collage, which you saw in a previous video, the link of which I'll put in the notes, and <clears throat> several layers now of paint. And there are a number of issues and I kind of want to focus really on keeping things moving that is kind of the point of of having a series so that you do, don't spend too long on one individual painting and you move on when you get stuck or when you don't know what to do next with a particular painting however i haven't been doing that but the thing that's associated with that is and i, I should probably have said that at the beginning really is that if we get into a mindset of what the painting is going to be too early on then that is a problem. It's certainly a problem for me. And it's certainly a problem if you want to be loose and expressive and less representational, because I keep force, trying to force into a mold that I've already preset. And I think that's where I'm, I'm uh, getting stuck. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to work on each of these for 15 minutes each and 15 minutes only, and then I'm gonna move on. So here, uh, I think you can see at the beginning when I saw I showed all three, uh, it's quite a, a literal image and so I'm really trying to loosen it up. I'm trying not to get too thinky, I'm putting blocks of colour down, I'm using quite a lot of mark making tools, scraping in and so on, as well as adding colour. Uh, you can't see all of the scratching in I'm doing but I am doing quite a bit and I'm also trying to take away that sort of big bold band at the top which I keep sort of wiping out and then reiterating um, and I'm sure I'm going to go through quite a few rounds of that but I'm trying to take away so that I don't have that sort of edge of a building which is not really what I want I want the feel of the building I want the the rawness of the building so I think it's going to be a one of, of kind of constant iteration here you can see where I'm actually taking away uh, some of that um, outline if you like which I really don't like um, and I will probably then reinstate by scratching in and doing different things. I'm using the brick there, look. Uh, and this is a second one. Um, wiping away and covering over with white paint the things that I don't like. Covering things over, scraping things in, using uh, different colours but using uh, adding white space. I don't like that blocky band across the top so I'm going to be re sort of trying to address that and take that away working in with the marks. Here you see me using the uh, trowel quite a bit again, being brave and covering over things. And then adding different colors, giving a different feel, breaking things up a bit as well. Adding some bright orange at the front or at the, at the left hand side, turning it around again helps and then really scraping in with a knitting needle and being brave with white paint to take some of the blockiness away. So I hope that's been helpful as a way of 
sharing uh, with you uh, some of the progress on the ramshackles and talking about pushing through uh, these uh, mucky middle stages and keeping focused with respect to timings and keep pushing the mark making as well as uh, having and starting to have a dialogue uh, with our work uh, so that our intentions can be met really. So uh, thanks very much for watching. I'd love to hear your comments and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.